What's up Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with some more Rise of Mordor today and today we are in Athelion as two huge orc armies uh, along with some evil men ambush or are ambushed by some men of, Ro of Rohan of Gondor of course we are in Gondor and Athelion, why would Rohan be here? but yeah so these are uh, some Gondor forces holding against Mordor um, while they are waiting on a larger force to appear. So if they wait, if they survive to the end of this time at the top, then they uh, then they win. If they don't, then obviously they've died and they become man flesh and uh, suffer for the orcs. Not necessarily the evil men like these Haradrim over here, but you know, they 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 can just eat like I don't know, bread, maggoty bread. But yeah, so the army's just setting up. They've uh, already they can see this force here. They do not. Oh, they actually have seen. There's a little ambush force that started down here instantly. We have some uh, militia over here, some sword militia, and some axemen of Loznarch ready. They are getting ready to fight, and they're going after the general already, the servants of the eye, already going after this guy. And here he comes charging in. These guys are really tough to take out, these uh, servants of the eye. They're probably as strong as like the Elven King for like the Woodland Realm. Possibly slightly weaker, I'd still say the Elven King is stronger than just about any cavalry unit in this game. But these, uh, yeah, these sword militia shouldn't hold too long. They're pro they're against like some pretty weak stuff themselves. They're against Haradrim and some orc pillagers. The pillagers are probably going to be the uh, the difference in that fight there. But yeah, you can see already these Gondor sword militia already breaking. The uh, axe warriors of uh, or the Loznarch warriors of Loznarch already breaking or wavering as well. And I mean they've killed only two uh, servants of the eye. That shows how tough these guys are. Really, really nasty to take out. And the, the engagement side over here, we now have some spear militia engaging against some Haradrim here. These guys are, uh, well, I mean, this is just a battle of the rubbish, really. I mean, both sides are pretty awful here. We've got some Blackroot Veil archers back here. They need to start firing soon. Start firing! Okay, maybe they haven't been given the order, I don't know. But, uh, I mean, if you look at the balance of power, we have, like, 10,000 troops on the battlefield. Maybe a bit more than that, but it's basically... Um, well, you can look at the balance, well, yeah, 6,000 versus 4,000. Um, obviously, the men of Gondor do have better quality stuff, but, uh, whether it's, whether it'll be enough, who knows? Whether it'll be enough, who knows? I mean, they're already starting with the next, uh, the second Mordor army. He's already getting ready over here. But there's a slightly sizable and better defense here for, from Gondor. We'll have to see what can be done. What have they got here? They've got some, uh, Ringlo men at, Vale men at arms. They've got some Penethgill and Spears. We've got more Black Root Veil archers. We've got some cavalry somewhere. Um, here it is. It's about to go into combat by looks of it. This Gondor cavalry is getting ready. Engage them! Kill every single South Thron there is! But yeah, so these... I mean, these cavalry, this cavalry is pretty nasty for, uh, for, for Gondor. It's got some very heavy cavalry, uh, spear cavalry here. And they've got a few chevrons, so they should be able to beat up these uh, vassal South Throns quite easily. If they don't, then well, uh, what a waste of uh, money they were. But I mean, they're about to get rear charged at any moment by some more uh, South Thrones. We'll have to see what happens. And here they come, into the rear. They kind of missed, actually. Oh no, this one's not going to miss. Oh, yeah. I do apologize if it's ever so slightly laggy. I presume it's just because of the sheer amount of troops on here. I mean, it's only 10,000 in fairness, so it, should be, it shouldn't really be an issue, but uh, who knows? Who knows? But I mean, you can see there's a sneaky flanking, flanking force coming around. What we've got here, we've got some Uruk spears getting ready. We've got Orc warriors. Um, they're all coming around. They're going to sneak around here. I mean, most of the infantry is now engaged. Most of these are Penneth Gillen and Ringlo Vale men at arms. They're not the best. They're sort of like representing like the militia that would be here in Athelion. But there is some more nasty stuff waiting to come. How is the uh, far side doing? It's not looking so great. Uh, these black group, I mean, they're just about to break that front line. There you go. I mean, some spears are now returning, but how long they will hold, who knows? Who knows? The enemy refuses to admit defeat. They do need to 
And there you go, they've already routed. Now the archers gonna have to go into combat if they want to carry on. And he's Haradrim. I mean, look at this, the orcs are like, we're actually so much, like, the orcs are like, oh, we'll just send in the dirty Haradrim for us. They're just lesser beings. These orcs are no one, not much superior, but there you go. Orcs view uh, Haradrim as lesser people. Haradrim lives matter, we should say. But there you go, some more uh, Southrons going in here, some cavalry going in. I did have a few issues uh, loading this replay, so I wonder wh whether that is the uh, the reason why uh, it's ever so slightly jittery, but I do apologise. But I hope you guys have been enjoying the content at the moment, and if you'd like to see more Rise of Mordor, then do uh, leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. And I do appreciate all the support at the moment. Uh, I can't thank you all guys enough. And let's just hope, let's carry on this growth and try and get to 2,000 subs. That's all I can say. All I can say. And also, if you'd like to get involved in some Rise of Mordor battles, um, then all you have to do is join the Discord. The link is in the description down below. If you'd like to get involved in some really cool scenarios or just some epic custom sieges or whatever. But it does look like the cavalry for Gondor is going to win over here. Um, or have been winning. They've just destroyed some units over here. I mean, they're certainly inflicting a lot of damages are uh, Gondor. I mean, they've lost half of their troops though. And they've only killed about a thousand off, which is not great odds for Gondor. But here we go, we're going to have a charge here. And this cavalry should go in and probably uh, cut down this Haradrim again. It is elite stuff. But if the infantry joins in the fight, then that's never a good sign. But here comes some uh, Penneth Gill and some Ringlow Vale, so they will turn out. They'll turn the tide. But I mean, this defense is a bit more stern. I mean, they've nearly wiped out nearly everything here. Um, these archers over here, sadly, are going to get cut down. A real shame. We're going to need archers later on. But I mean, we'll quickly have a look at the next defense, which is ready. I will make a cut for when they have to travel over here. But we have, obviously, in Athelion, we have Athelion Rangers. What else do we have? We have. Uh, well, we have more Athelian Rangers with three units. We've then got Gondor Sword Infantry, the, elite, the uh, most elite uh, swords that we have available to us today. Um, and I think actually in the entire Ross, I don't think they have anything like more elite than this. Um, and then we've got some more Axemen of Loz and Arch back here. We've got plenty of Gondor Infantry. I think we've got about five units. Some, uh, some Warriors of Loz and Arch. And then we have our General back here, Knights of the Silver Swan. And that'll be it. That is all that is available to us. But we have a very formidable defense. It's like a huge cavern so it should be okay I mean these guys are still taking names Just look at this winning slightly I mean they are fighting cavalry with spears so there's no surprise there yeah these vassal Haradrim are getting a bit beaten up now I mean the orcs don't care these men are like underlings to them underlings of Sauron I think most of the infantry is gone. This infantry line, yeah, has just been routed. That's all that's left of the orc infantry here. And they're going to... I don't know actually what they are going for. These Gondor cavalry is now loose. Um, I think it's going... I don't know where it's going. You know what? I won't I won't lie. I'm not sure where it's going. Oh, it might be going after this cavalry here. This tiny little unit cavalry here. Just has to avoid... Kind of charges through. Phases through. And they're going on. They've kind of already routed that unit. So they can just kind of charge on in. And they're going to go after the archers over here, these poor Uruk archers. I mean, there's not enough for the cavalry to actually make a difference. How many's left? 20. It's like, uh, look at this. If they actually set, set up and start firing, it'd be like uh, Faramir's charge out of Minas Tirith. And they're going to try and fire, but no, not in time. And there you go. This is probably what it was like for Faramir. Just like charged in, just no impact. And then they're getting rear charged by cavalry. And that'll be their fate. These poor Gondor cavalry. Oh. Look at that guy snatched from his horse. And that is it. Most of the uh, infantry is now routed here. And the cavalry is also uh, basically gone. There is a tiny little bit left. But, uh, I mean, okay, wait a minute. It's going to rally. The men of Gondor are not finished. They don't give up the fight so easily. Or they might do. I mean, these aren't really the men of Gondor. These are the men of Ringlow, Vale, wherever that is in the world, and Penneth Gillen. So, kind of just suburbs of, or like regions of Gondor. They're not true. Gondorians. Here they go. They're going to charge one more time. There they are. Brave men. Take a few orcs with you. These are just mere orc warriors. So these guys are uh, 
pretty pretty irrelevant. It's the Urux you need to worry about if you're fighting Mordor. If you ever fight Mordor, worry about the Urux. But there's some Gondor no Carry over here that's rallied. Um, eight men, I don't think that's really going to make the difference. And there you go, look at that. Haradrim just charging in and they're going to die. Uh, well, the infantry's going to die, not the Haradrim. Haradrim are very safe right now. Nothing to worry about now. Um, but I will now probably make a quick cut. They are... That's basically the second defense uh, finished. It's now going to get ready for this defense over here. And uh, so I'll see you guys in a moment. So here we go. The expedition by Mordor has begun with a, uh, a quick little sal a charge by the uh, Haradrim cavalry, which all that's left of it really, into the Gondor infantry. And they are, well, they're not going to get through, put it like that. There is hardly any of these guys. And uh, they're going to get chopped down and killed quite quickly by the uh, Gondor infantry, you do, you do imagine. Now Gondor has to hold here at this uh, defensive position and basically hold until the relief Gondor army arrives. There isn't actually one on the map because, uh, well, we just didn't bother putting it on, but it's just for the scenario. So if Gondor can hold long enough, then a relief army will appear and will basically just come on and save the day because you imagine hopefully that Mordor will have lost enough to do the damage. But you can see here these Athelian Rangers are getting ready. They're going to uh, march up and they're going to... Uh, Probably get like an angle. I think they're going to go like, I don't know exactly where they're going. I think they're going to the edge of this forest here and they're going to fire into whatever units come in to attack the Gondor infantry here. And they have got an excellent angle. I mean, they're doing the same on this side as well. They've got men ready. Here they go. Give us a volley, men. A volley. And they can't actually see anything. They're literally firing over a cliff and they are literally not able to see anything. Uh, I think they're actually, yeah, they're targeting the general. Not a bad idea. The servants of the eye unit is pretty tough, but he is going to fall back. I think we got a couple of kills, but not many. Um, but yeah, you want to now target these uh, Uruks. These are going to be the tough stuff. This is the stuff that can really compete with the uh, Gondor infantry. And there you go. The first volley is coming in. They're going to feel the pain. As the, uh, well, they're quite blobbed up as well. So they need to be, uh, they need to be careful as Mordor about just sending his troops in, in like in blobs like this. Makes it very easy for the Athelian Rangers to get kills. Uh, if only I had more archers here. If I had more Athelian Rangers here. And, or more uh, Blackroot Vale, in fact. Because you can only bring three Athelian Rangers max per army. So more uh, like Blackroot uh, Vale. Or the ones that I already had back here. They'd be devastating for these uh, poor these poor orcs. But here they go. Another volley. Uh, not, as, not as effective. But I'm sure... Yeah, this one here, you can see, is starting to chop these guys down. Already down to 179. I think that's the first volley. I'll uh, try and get another volley in a moment and see what happens. Here we go. How many are you going to get now? Yeah, another 20 kills. So if they're doing 20 each time, that's going to be some devastating kills there. But there you go. The Haradrim now in combat against Gondor Infantry. This is not a match they can win. Uh, but they'll try. They'll try their hardest. But they have no shields. So Gondor is just going to... Uh, Probably just mop these guys up quite easily. And there you go, this guy in the back getting stabbed in the guts. But yeah, I mean, you can now see, look at this Athelian Ranger. He's devastated this unit. He's just being shot in the back. And the Mordor player did not know where they were being shot from, I don't think. Um, because he didn't send them in. He just decided to leave them. And 72 men, they're going to waver at 72 men uh, from a 200. So that's a unit basically neutralized. Move on to the next one and then on to the spears and see how many you can damage. But you can see more units coming up now. Some more Haradrims already on the way up. More Orc Pillages. Um, they've still got plenty in reserve. They've still got all of these... Uh, this stuff, we've got Uruk Spears, Uruk Throng back here. Uh, this is all Uruks back here, I think. And we've got some Orcs, actually, as well. But yeah, there's not a lot left. I mean, there is a lot left, because, I mean, it's still 4,200 to about 1,300. So it's way over double um, the numbers. Almost triple. It is. It's almost, yeah, it's probably about triple. Nearly quadruple. Well, this shield wall will never break. It will never falter. These orcs. I mean, I don't know what it is with the orcs. And they have, like, weird... Um, the weird, like, helmets they have going on. It's kind of weird, but... I mean, I guess... If they could give them, like, really, like, random assorted armor, that would be really good. But I guess there's only so many, like, variations you can do. But, like, obviously, like, all orcs just had, like, just 
random armor put together. But we do have uh, plenty of reserves. We have two more units of Gondor infantry back here. We have obviously one there in the back lines ready. All these three units of rangers. We also have some uh, Axemen of Loz and Arch and some Knights of the Silver Swan all ready uh, to be mobilized at some point. But you can see here the next unit of uh, Uruk Throng already down to 87. So that's being, you know, really it's time to now move on to the Uruk Spears. They're next to be shot. I mean, these guys are already, look at this, wavering. They're getting shot a little bit more, 77. They're getting whittled down and they're, they're going to break before they get to combat. That is excellent. That's really big for Gondor. He doesn't really want these uh, Uruk Throng to just get to the front line and do some damage. So that's really good. I mean, you can look at the bodies already. These guys just dis destroyed. I mean, they've broken once and that's it. They're going to be immobilized now. But I'm sure these guys back here... Again, I'm pretty sure these guys have, like, no angle with all the trees here. No angle. Well, look at them. Glorious. In an Aethelian ambush. Just like in the two towers. But yeah, they can't really actually see. All they can... The best they can see is see their comrades across the other side doing exactly the same thing. Um, but actually, no. These guys are now firing at the archers over here. Um, and they've been disintegrating these guys. Look at that. There's a volley. And the blood splatter. And that'll, uh, that just shows to you what they're doing. And taking a couple of these guys down. Every single uh, volley. Yeah, look, that bow, when they draw it back. Look at that. That's so weird. That is really weird, but I kind of like it. Let's have a, let's have, go on there, man. Shoot your, shoot your shot. Oh, no. You just, you're going to run away. Okay. Coward. An orcish coward. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that is... Well, that is what they're dealing with. So the archers, the Athelians are trying to neutralize these archers. I mean, they're doing a good job. More are being sent up by the orcs, though. Uh, and the uh, pillagers here tried to break through, and they did successfully break through. They got to the second line, but they're now going about to get de dealt with by these uh, this third line, or this third line, the second line here. You do imagine if they carry on persisting like they are, they just the game looks so glorious. I can never get over how great this looks. But here you go. Here's like another wave. Oh, actually, I was going to say another wave, but it's just like the re remnants that keeps breaking and just returning. The next wave's still all the way back here. And the two generals are pretty safe. But I'm going to quickly just do some fast forwarding. Um, you can see the damage done by this Uruk Arch. Uh, by the uh, Uruk on the Uruk again. And this one got down to 90 before it got mobilized. This one is uh, a lot more fresher. But uh, yeah, they're just being sent in. These guys are going to uh, basically hold here. Obviously, as you can see here, the pillagers are trying to break their way through again. And these are Gondor infantry now being finally committed, and they're going to cut them down. But I mean, yeah, I'm just a massive choke point now, and Gondor is never going to break anytime soon. Um, so I'm going to quickly just fast forward a little bit, and just until there's like another development. I mean, at the moment it's just this current wave up here, and uh, but yeah, that's kind of all that is really going on. I'll, I mean, I'll slow it down at some points, but there is just mainly a choke point going on at the moment. I mean, you can see back here we're, while we're uh, waiting for like some stuff to develop. All look at how many archers are dead. And these archers like had so much ammo left. This one, for instance, has a lot. This one has a lot as well. To be honest, they all do. It's kind of the point you were making, Pope. This one's fresh, um, and he's got a lot of ammo. I think it's now forcing back these Athelian Rangers. They are now getting chipped away. They're, well, they've been more than chipped away. They've lost over half their strength. Um, we've got the axes of Loznarch getting ready to move up. Got more Gondor infantry getting ready, and the next wave of the orcs is yet to move, but. It surely won't be long. I mean, the numbers now look a lot better for the men of Gondor. They were at like 4,000 with the orcs, and they're now down to 2,800. They've killed about 1,200 off, if not 1,400 off. Um, and this is all that's left of the first wave. This is the, one of the first armies being sent in um, by Aiden. But yeah, this is being uh, kind of chipped away ever so slowly. He did have a tough time. He had to come up first and face all of the ammo of the Athelian Rangers. But it would be would have been good if they had some ammo left. And here you go, the rangers are about to be sent in, as is the next wave of Gondor infantry. And the arrows now of the orcs are starting to uh, fly past. And you do wonder whether they'll pick these guys off quite nicely. Due to, uh, like, the blobbing that's going on here. You don't really, I shouldn't have really done this with Gondor. Should have, but I mean, they are forcing them back. They are going to break these guys, most of these guys anyway. Now they can uh, then push on to uh, the archers, that would be really good. They kind of want to just carry on fighting them, catch them out. 
get the general up here. Would have been a good idea for me to get my general all the way up. He could have charged into those uh, archers. And these infantry here wouldn't have really been able to stop him. Maybe only the servants of Sauron. Or the servants of the, uh, the eye, I do apologize. But yes, that is kind of the first wave over and done with. Just like that, really. There's only like, there's a mix of Haradrim still in here. And some more warriors. But yeah, the, the lines are going to be reformed. And the next wave is ready. But yeah, this is it. It's kind of just chopping down a few guys here and there. Jewel of the century here going on. Look at this. Oh, yes. Take him down. It looked like he had a bit of a Rohirrim still going on. Didn't look like he was a proper Gondor. Oh, he got the kill. No. Oh, rip it. That poor Gondor soldier. And here you go. These uh, Orc Warriors are going to carry on their fight. They're going to go on into the next line. I mean, it's a stern defense by Gondor. There's so many of them. But yeah, here comes the second wave now. It's just getting ready. It is getting ready. You do wonder uh, how many... Well, you do wonder what, how many uh, men, or orcs I should say, these men of Gondor can take on. I mean, they still got, what have they got now? It's just about 2,100. They're doing okay. There's 1,100 of them left. So they've lost 300 to killing about 3,000. So by that rate, they should do okay. But they have killed off the mostly the trash stuff that's left, like the Haradrim, the Orc Warriors. It's now the time of the Uruks. And here they come. I mean, they look really dark. You turn around. Looks a bit better. I mean, I do love like how they have their pikes in reserve. It does look really, really good. Like the like the reserve units, just, they have their pikes in like the back, just stood up. Looks really good. Do wonder whether they should redo these units. So they kind of look good at the time, but like now, I don't know. Like in comparison to some of the others, like the elves, they're just not up to the same standard. You do think? Also, like they, they, I think they just look a bit too uniform for like orc armies. Like orc armies are just a bit more ragtag. Like, I know they. There's like so many variations to probably do of a unit. But uh, they do look a little bit goofy, a little bit. Don't look like proper Oryx from like the movies. They look a bit, they need to look a bit more chunky. These boys look a little bit slim. They look like the Oryx on uh, a diet. Um, it looks like, well, these uh, Athelian Rangers have been held in reserve. I think it, the idea was to lure the archers into shooting them. Waste their ammo there. And if they fire, fire arrows, the uh, attackers, or the Yorks, I should just say, they can do some more damage to morale that way. But the Gondor, the horns of the Gondor army will soon be heard over those hills, you do imagine. Um, but yeah, the Athelian map looks awesome. I do love it. I don't. I mean, I, I presume that huge swathe of water there is kind of part of the map because they have like bits just off to the uh, the edge that like you can't play in, but they've added in. Um, so I presume it's like I can't actually remember if the Athelian does have that huge bit of water. I presume it does. It might be. The Anduin or whatever it's called. Is it the Anduin? I can't remember exactly what the names of the uh, rivers are in Lord of the Rings. But it might be that. But hopefully, uh, game back to the battle. Hopefully Gondor can hold. Athelion is the first like the first stand. Then it's Osgiliath. Then it's Minas Tirith. They need a hold here. They want to, or at least they can kill enough. Then they can't, the Orcs can't make a counter attack. Well, let's uh, just fast forward again a little bit as uh, we've now, like I said, we're just in a choke point here. It's not uh, not too exciting, sadly, for you guys. But um, as you can see, the next wave is in here. It's a massive blob and just massive cl clash of units. Um, if we, like, put it in, like, look at this view. This looks really cool. You can see, like, the orcs on the right and then uh, the men of Gondor. Oh, the men of Gondor on the left. Shouldn't wave my mouse around too much, otherwise you are... Uh, it kind of goes out of shot. But yeah, this looks really awesome, really. Just like, just watching from above what's happening. You can put it in normal speed. You can hear the shouts and the screams of the men and the orcs in combat.
But here comes some more Haradrim. I'm surprised that they were left. There's any of them left. But they're going to route instantly, those fools. But yeah, I mean, if we had another unit back here or another unit of archers, that would have been really useful. But I mean, yeah, like loads of the uh, Light Root Veiled put, sadly died over here. I know we're going away from the battlefield for a moment, but yeah, like look at these old Black Root Veil archers. They would have been so useful. They had so much ammo. Could have been useful at the back, but I mean, soon the idea, the idea was to try and get as many kills as possible. The first one over there, I think, racked up quite a few kills. The other two just got absolutely destroyed by all, like the huge amount of cavalry. I was just uh, able to come around and flank these troops. But let me know in the comments, what is your favourite Lord of the Rings film? And if you haven't seen Lord of the Rings films, get on it. What are you doing in... I mean, lockdown's almost over here, really. We're kind of getting sort of back to normal. But, uh, perfect time to be watching them. Really, if you have, a, like, nine hours of time, if you watch the extended version, which is the only true version to watch. Um, but yeah, let me, let me know which one is your favourite in the comments. I'd personally say it's possibly The Fellowship, because it's such a good world builder. I do enjoy seeing... The, like Tolkien's world being built in the movies, but um, but obviously some of the other ones are really good as well. Uh, obviously with their huge battles, but I do enjoy like I don't, don't enjoy seeing Boromir die. If you haven't seen it, a spoiler there. But um, but like his how his death is is just really well done in the movies, I think. And uh, obviously Sean Bean's is a perfect person to uh, get killed off because he gets killed off. I think he like I saw a stat and he gets killed off in over a third of the movies or like any roles that he has he gets killed in a third of them that's pretty insane for an actor He's, Sean Bean probably goes into a role and goes well there's a third um, there's a one in three chance I may die in this role that's pretty mad But I do like this that view there. That looks oh wrong one. I do love that view there. I mean, it's, this is kind of a bit different angle, but look at this guy here. He's going like really deep into combat, and he now dies for his uh, foolhardy bravery. Don't leave your men. Stay stand by stand stand side by side, men of Gondor. Don't go off and do some heroic thing like Boromir. Get yourself killed. I mean, Boromir did something heroic. He had to redeem himself for his uh, foolishness. But, I mean, yeah, this is it. This is all that Mordor's got left. All the reserves back there, gone. Um, they're all gone. It's now down to these boys. I mean, Gondor nearly has everything in there. He's got his axes left and his cavalry. The cavalry's just popping rallies because, uh, well, I think the missile, like, they're not quite shooting stuff yet, but they are uh, not shooting fire arrows, but they're just shooting. And apparently, just volleys scare people. But yeah, they're trying to shoot our general, but that's not going to happen. He's a strong unit. I think that shaking of the ground is... Uh, well, it's uh, the cavalry. He's trying to break through. It's not going to happen. Another one over here is trying to push through uh, to get to the front lines, and it's not going to happen. It's far too strong a defense by Gondor. The men of Gondor will hold anything. I mean, they didn't hold it at the gates of Minas Tirith, but they'll hold in this choke point. I'm sure of it. Here come the uh, axes. Boys are finally coming. Let's get their view. I mean, they're not going to get into the combat for a long time. They're right at the back of the uh, map. Or ma back of the map. Back of the uh, the fight. And I'm trying to get to a guy in the front line who might get a, a sniff of the fight. But yeah, they're actually pushing through. They're like, no, get out of the way. I've got a big axe. I need to get through to the front line. I've got a big axe and I've got a temper to fuel. And yeah, they are getting actually to the front line. There's quite a lot of them here. Yeah, look at this guy. He's like, yes, I'm going to swing my big axe. I've been waiting all battle. I've watched some of my brothers have already died in the first wave. They do look glorious.
But we'll uh, quickly fast forward again for a little bit. Just because, uh, well, that's the next development. The axes get sent in. I mean, as you can see here, it's now just kind of a grind. People are just popping rallies and firing fires if you've got them, if you're in the case of Mordor. And the general over here has also got Encourage. So that's another one they can also use. I mean, they just kind of balancing out each one, everyone's, uh, like, abilities, basically. So at the moment, it's minus six, and then they pop this. Encourage plus nine. So it kind of sorts out that deficit there. That's kind of all that kind of happens for a little bit. I'm going to just keep him fast forward. You can watch the battle and fast forward a little bit. Watch these men. But it's a very much a grind. And uh, it doesn't really look like the numbers have changed at all, really. I mean, you can sort of see that the uh, front line of where Gondor initially started, um, like back here, where these dead bodies are, it's kind of progressed forward. Whether that's good. Oh my gosh, that's not good. Look at this. The Warriors lost notch wavering at 146. Now this rally, but um, I think it's just because of the fire arrows. Got units here breaking. They should return. Um, yeah, as you get, there you go. Returning. They've not quite beaten up enough yet. They can afford to lose a few more men. And the general, uh, the general is uh, still popping his rallies back there in the safety of the woods. So the archers don't shoot at him. Can't afford to uh, lose a general to a stray arrow at this point, especially when morale is so, like, delicately put. It's, like, delicately balanced. Like, either side could just break. But, I mean, hopefully, these Axemen can get to the front line and do another decent charge. I mean, they've lost a f quite a few men, and I don't know if they've got many kills. Um, you can see here, the cavalry's trying to get round again. And there is actually a pretty big gap here. I'll um, try and show you from... Well, I mean, this side's kind of pretty useful to show, but you can see there's a, a tiny line of Gondor infantry here. This is all that's holding them back, and they are forcing them back. And then there's a small, like, unit of uh, Athelian Rangers here, just waiting... Um, Desperately hoping that the Gondor infantry hold them back because those Athelian Rangers certainly won't hold back these heavily armoured uh, servants of Sauron. Look at them. That is a nasty piece of work if I've seen one. And there's 60 of them. And here you go. They're going to get through. This one's nearly through. There you go. The first few are through. Winding their way through. And over the hills come the uh, Knights of... Uh, well, the Swan Knights, basically. And then all of a sudden, I give them misclick and dismount them. And that was not the, the uh, decision I wanted to make. I just wanted to keep them in combat here on uh, their horses. And it was uh, frustrating that I did it. I was trying to pop a rally, which I then do. You can see that I press encourage, and encourage is right next to dismount. And uh, I, I, was pre I pressed dismount. So, there you go. Pope makes a, uh, a mistake, and will it cost him? Maybe, maybe not. Service of the eye here, now losing decisively, though. Because they're fighting infantry, which is actually cavalry. And here come the big axe boys. We pulled them out of the front lines. They're not doing any good over there. We're going to send them in. Take out these a these horsemen with their big axes. And chop these men down. And this is something they're used to. Chopping down horses. Taking limbs off. And killing he men on horses. And there you go. There's one down already. And that'll just be the first of many you do imagine. Look at this guy. There's another one gone. Not to an axe from the Lost Arch. But it's another one gone. There's another one dropping. And I mean, I think we killed quite a few. Got them down to 41, and the other one's down to 50. The one on 41 is the um, general of the main army that's left. The one on 50 has just got his, uh, his general, and that is it. Now the general has decided that's it. He's going in combat. He's, he's lost his horses. They're all, all running around somewhere. I don't know exactly where. They're running around uh, the... The fields are all the way over there, aren't they? Look at them. They're having a fun time. They don't have to worry about uh, the world of men and elves and everyone else. They can just uh, run around. But yes, I mean, it's kind of now just down to who will break first. It might be uh, Gondor. It's another unit wavering there. But we're going to fast forward again quickly as the horses come through again. Look at them trotting through. They don't care about the battle as well. They're just going to break through everyone's lines. That should really do damage, to be honest. I know they're going fast forward, so they're going really quickly, but charging through enemy lines should really uh, kill a few men for that. By accident, obviously. It'd be kind of cool if that was a thing. But yeah, fire projectiles, minus 6. Scare, minus 15. 
and they encourage the scares luckily gone now but I mean they are doing some nasty damage uh, in morale terms to us not necessarily actually killing us but that does initially mean that our men start to run or they don't fight as well so they do then die quicker I mean if you look at the balance power now it's 1300 to just over uh, just under 700 so these guys are they're starting to whittle us down these gondor infantry have been in combat a very long time And there's not long, though, left. If uh, Mordor's got to break through soon, can he do it? The horns of Gondor's relief army are heard in the distance. The men of Gondor are, re are encouraged, or they've rallied, in this case. Uh, rally to the horns. The horns. The banners. For the steward of Gondor, as we still wait on a king. But these, I mean, yeah, these units just look glorious. I just can't get over how great they are. Beautiful. Oh, what a murder by this guy. He just stabbed this guy in the neck. Poor man. Or poor orc. But then orc lives don't matter. But then the orc life, the orcs don't think Haradrim lives matter. So, does that mean, I don't know. That's a weird circle. The orcs see men as men lives don't matter. Probably. They just see them as like food. Yeah, imagine being a man and you just seen as food. Men are starting to waver, it looks like. Yeah. This unit here is starting to break. 26 men left and it's gone. And more units under these axemen of Lost Notch are really wavering. 122 men, they're wavering. And these Lithuanian Rangers are wavering as well. But yeah, imagine being a man and you're just like food for the, uh, for the orcs. You're not seen as anything else. Not even seen as a normal person, just seen as sustenance. I'm kind of just going on about weird stuff now. It's what happens the longer you get into a Pope video. Pope starts to bring out really weird theories. Along with excellent commentary. Or what I would say is a commentary. Excellent is your, opinion, is your guys' opinion. If you carry on watching, this is what you get. You get weird theories. Also, how do orcs know what a menu is? That's a real question. I wouldn't have thought there was a menu in Middle Earth, so how would they know what to say that line? But we'll fast forward again quickly, just get through uh, a bit more of this. Shorten it down. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, the general is actually doing okay. How many men has he lost? Only eight men. He's been fighting on foot, which is kind of alien to this unit. I mean, now. Um, the servants of the eye have been sending themselves. They're firing fires uh, to try and still break these guys. But yes, one of the servants of the eye, it's the one with the main army here, has gone in and is uh, risked his life. He doesn't need to. He's got a subordinate here, you could say. Aiden's uh, general, who is, um, well, you could send him in. He's not got an army left. That's what I was going to say. Um, but no, they're going to send in the uh, one with the general first. I'm sure if this uh, general dies, then the morale probably doesn't shoot off, off that badly because you've still got the other general. But this line is just not moving. I mean, I think these Uruk spears are starting to get killed off. And this is all that's really holding them back. There's Uruk throng here as well. But if they can push through here quickly, they could then work their way to get into these archers. And then wrap round, but I mean, it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot. If they had archers, if Gon had one unit of archers left, it would have made this second wave so much easier. Um, and so much shorter. Because they just shot into the back. There's just nothing the uh, Uryx could have done. Or the Orcs, I should say. But it is mainly Uryx left. The Uryx carrying the day. But this does remind me massively of like the two towers and the defense of Oskilia with like the uh, rangers of the Thelian, um, like they're lightly armored, um, with excellent bowmen working with the heavily armored uh, elite swordsmen of Gondor. Like you see it in like Oskilia, these guys are like, working together, and they obviously are part of the same army. But like the Athelian rangers usually worked 
alone, uh, like doing ambushes like this, and uh, just basically doing their own like reconnaissance stuff. And then like the Gondor infantry will be in the main line, the front line, and the actual proper pitch battles or sieges. But you can see this line now from Gondor is not uh, not very thick. I mean, but there's a massive difference. Like the the force with the king in or like the general is up here further on the high ground. This flank is starting to push back the orcs and they really do look like they could break through, get to these horses back here and then push to the uh, archers. But there is really not much left in it now. Got just under 500 men against fi uh, a thousand. Jeez. Just under 500 men against a thousand men or orcs. But uh, we'll have to see whether the men of Gondor can hold it. I mean, they've done well at like the odds they were at before. It's almost three, four to one, and now they're trying to push these guys back. I mean, the men of Gondor are starting to lose though in combat there for some reason, and then it's gone back to even. I mean, the Oryx uh, are having the same issue, just losing decisively. Are, losing are they going to break? They may do. Men are wavering though. Who's breaking now? Who is brave at breaking now? I don't know. It might be these Gondor sword infantry here. It might be uh, the uh, um, the axemen. I'm not sure. All the archers, or nearly all the archers, are gone. There's only one little Athelian ranger unit left. But they must hold. They must hold. Oh, it's through the head. Yes, kill him. Make sure he's dead. Make sure he's dead. This guy's next on the list. He's got three good men of Gondor. Four men of Gondor forcing him back. Kill him. Someone should get an angle on him. We've still got the uh, servants of the eye here just chilling. They're going to dismount as well now. They're going to get sent in. Send in the elite men. They can get some kills. And the men of Gondor are still trying to force these guys back. But there you go. They're breaking. Gondor sword infantry, 29 men breaking, and the axemen are going to break as well. It's 79 by the looks of it. They're wavering. It's this morale damage they're doing with the fire ammo. Fire ammo. You can see here, see here that the uh, servants of the eye are trying to flank around. 32 of them left. They're going to possibly do it as well. They are in behind. And there you go. The other general, the backup general, 49 men, is going to flank around here. And this flank is gone. The flank that is like overextended is doing just fine. It's the one that's trying to hold. I mean, it's just the general holding now. He's losing decisively. 43 men trying to hold back. Hundreds. Hundreds. Um, and it's now 300 against 1,000. Here come the warriors of Loznarch. They're going to have to fight this uh, force that's going behind. Can they do it? I mean, I don't think so. These guys were already routed a few times, and this is a general unit. And these servants of the eye seem to be just as good in combat on the ground as they do in the, uh, well, I was about to say in the air. Oh, I do apologize. Um, I was about to say in the air, but on horseback is what I was going to say. But now some more infantry are having to be withdrawn from the front line. And the enemy general is dead. The main army's like, general is dead. That, he controls all this. But, as you can see, he's not really phased the uh, orcs. I mean, there's a unit here that's breaking. There's uh, some wavering stuff here. But, yeah, the orcs are carrying on. They're persisting. This uh, Gondor Sword Infantry unit here, they should be able to get the Servants of Eye. It's a shame that these uh, Lozenarch troops don't regroup, rejoin, because they could flank around, and that would be devastating for the Servants of the Eye. A shocking retreat in behind. But I don't rate the Axemen of Lozenarch. They are sadly the only unit that Gondor has as a shock. It's a shame they don't like have a two-handed sword unit, possibly. Um, like... Haven Guard, but uh, it'd be like as a shock infantry. I'm pretty sure that Dol Amroth has that, but it'd be a shame that like Gondor doesn't have one because I think they either need they need a buff or they just I don't know they need another like more expensive shock infantry unit because their shock infantry compared to other factions is just awful. Like I'd say Dol Guldur's champions of Dol Guldur are even better, but they are. They cost more. Um, like Gondor's shock infantry is, by, I think, one of the cheapest and possibly one of the worst. And there you go, a draw we have. It ended in a draw. 
the men of Gondor held the line and the reserve of uh, the reinforcement army did in fact arrive, which is what the Gondor uh, forces had to do. Um, but I think another five minutes and they were done for. Um, they were really well and truly surrounded and they were in trouble. Um, but yeah, so have a look at the end results. So thank you to Aiden and Dodgy God for pl playing. Um, Dodgy God has a, a channel of his own. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description if you want to go and check it out. And do please go and support him, guys. Be much appreciated. Um, but yeah, we'll have a look at Gondor's uh, forces first. So I mean, these, like the sword militia here, 168 got more kills than these warriors of the Lozenarch. And they're awful, these sword militia. A ring with veil, men at arms, again, not a great unit. Got more than the warriors of the Lozenarch. I think these guys just aren't great. I know I charged one into like the flank on the side. The other one just did nothing. And it was in the initial fight fighting like uh, really bad units. Um, but yes, the ring low veil, ring, ring low veil men at arms. That's a tongue twister. Uh, 208, 203, 408 kills with these Gondor Sword Infantry. 443, then another one on 391. So they did really well. Um, the ring, uh, the uh, Warriors Laws and Archer already mentioned. Uh, Gondor Spear Militia got more kills than them as well. 99. Penneth Gillen again also getting more. 113. Black Root Vale Archers. I really need these guys at the back lines just to shoot these guys. They had so much ammo left. And one got nine kills. One got 43. One got 104, which is okay. But in comparison to the Athelian Rangers, who got 532, 306, and 566. These guys devastated. And then the cavalry getting 244 and 110, which is not bad themselves. So look at Aiden's army. Um, he was playing as this army here. We've got the Servants of the Eye, 122. His Vassal Haradrim uh, Swords getting 185, the best one. His Orc Warriors getting 160. And his uh, Uruk's not doing so well because they got focused down so hard. Uh, 225 kills with his Orc Pillagers. And his Uruk Spears the same, getting focused down really quickly. And his Cavalry uh, getting 247 kills. And Dodgy and didn't do so well with his uh, uh, Haradrim uh, Swords. But his uh, Orc Warriors did a lot better, getting 196 kills. And his um, Uruk Throng getting 130 kills, which again is better. And his pillage did worse, getting only 176 in Aiden's, um, 225. And the Uruks getting 185 kills. Um, and they just held to the end. They were just frustrating. But his cavalry did not do so well. It kind of came up against my cavalry and kind of got decimated. But if you guys enjoyed and would like to see more rides of Mordor action, please remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and uh, leave a comment to show your support. And until next time, Legionnaires, I will see you guys.